The judge finally recognized the importance of the information that the Twitter whistleblower gave and allowed Elon to include evidence from the whistleblower. This is a giant win for Musk, and now Twitter is in a horrible situation. With that, Musk also made a very interesting statement when he said that his Twitter purchase won't happen because of Russia and Putin. Musk said that he is waiting for a specific date and Putin, and that's exactly what will determine his desire to still own a Twitter. In the whistleblower complaint, Zatko, also known as Munch, in the hacking community, claims that Twitter put development over user security and safety. Twitter has refuted Zatko's assertions, claiming that they are unfounded, contradictory, and lack context. The disclosure of a settlement gives Twitter's wild year one more twist. Zatko signed a non-disclosure agreement as part of his settlement with Twitter, which forbids him from discussing his time at the business in public or criticizing it, but which does not stop him from testifying before Congress or submitting whistleblower complaints. Zatko will testify on Twitter's security concerns before the US Senate Judiciary Committee. During the latest court hearing, Elon Musk's attorneys revealed the settlement. At the hearing, Mr. Zatko claimed that Twitter had exaggerated its security measures and Musk's attorneys successfully argued that this should be taken into account. Musk asked for the trial to be postponed by four weeks, but Chancellor Catherine St. Jude McCormack, the chief judge of Delaware's Court of Chancery, refused. She has made, however, a very important decision and gave Musk a giant advantage. She led the multi-billionaire Tesla CEO to add evidence in support of claims made by Zatko, who is set to testify before Congress next week over the company's inadequate cybersecurity procedures. And this news might be a game-changer for Musk. The claims being made by Zatko to American officials, according to Musk's legal team, may support Musk's claims that Twitter deceived him, as well as the public, about the issue with bogus and spam accounts the firm was having. After voicing concerns about Twitter's carelessness in preserving the confidentiality and safety of its users, Zatko said he was sacked in January. The judge's decision came after a lengthy session, during which lawyers for Musk and Twitter butted heads about the validity of Zatko's accusations and the rate of which each party is gathering evidence in preparation for the trial. Twitter's lawyers made the claim that Zatko's first 27-page complaint to Twitter and a subsequent retaliation claim included no mention of the spam bot concerns that Musk has cited as a basis to terminate the agreement in an effort to minimize the significance of Zatko's claims to the merger conflict. According to Twitter attorney William Savitt, prior to filing his whistleblower lawsuit in July, Zatko never said a thing about spam or fake accounts. Since several weeks ago, Twitter has argued that Musk's stated reasons for pulling out of the deal were merely a pretext for having second thoughts after agreeing to pay 38% more than Twitter's stock price just before the market crashed and shares with the electric vehicle company manufacturer Tesla, where the majority of Musk's personal wealth is concentrated, lost more than $100 billion of their value. Musk's legal team argued in Delaware that the justice required postponing the five-day trial so that Musk could look into Zatko's allegations. Zatko's charges, according to Musk, had a company material adverse effect that significantly changed the firm's worth and invalidated the acquisition. Judge McCormack stated that the newly released whistleblower complaint offered Musk's team justification to modify their countersuit, but she chose not to comment on the specifics. She noted that she was hesitant to speak further about the merits of the counterclaims at this point until they had been completely litigated. The post-trial verdict must be patiently awaited by the entire world. However, McCormack agreed with Twitter's worries that putting off the trial would make it more difficult for the firm to resume operations. According to her, even a four-week wait would put Twitter at too high of a danger for it to be justified. Professor Brian Quinn of Boston College's law school stated that Musk suffered a severe loss as a result of this decision. He won't have any more time to prepare, and he now has to answer for the new concerns he brought up regarding Zatko. Twitter has called Zatko's claims false narratives, and the company's counsel said that the billionaire was using the whistleblower claims to hide the fact that he allegedly rushed into buying the business without fully understanding the dangers. At the hearing, Twitter's attorney delivered a message from Musk that was discovered during the legal dispute and which the attorney claimed demonstrated that the billionaire wasn't truly worried about spam accounts. According to Savitt, Musk is attributing his lack of due diligence to Twitter. He pleaded with the judge to stop Musk from including whistleblower allegations in his case, but if he is allowed, then the five-day trial should start on October the 17th as scheduled. It won't make sense to purchase Twitter 
if we're headed towards World Conflict 3, Musk said to a Morgan Stanley banker in May, as Russian President Vladimir Putin warned the West about his nation's war in Ukraine. According to Savit, it shows that Musk was seeking for just any way to get out of the agreement, and that his early comments about bots and fake accounts were just a cover for doing so. These messages and other issues concerning discovery were revealed at a hearing regarding postponing a trial scheduled for October. In a letter that claimed Twitter had unfairly suppressed information on bots and spam accounts, Musk informed Twitter in July that he was formally terminating his deal to purchase the firm. A banker at Morgan Stanley, which is funding a portion of Musk's acquisition, received the texts on May the 8th. The businessman also referenced Vladimir Putin's upcoming address in these messages. On May the 9th, at a speech commemorating the 77th anniversary of the Allies' victory over Nazi Germany, Putin made these remarks. He also made the unsubstantiated assertion that the West was preparing to invade Russia. Reading aloud Musk's communications during the hearing, Twitter's attorney stated, Let's slow down just a few days. Putin's speech tomorrow is really important. It won't make sense to buy Twitter if we're heading into World War III, he read. The whole text chain, which is anticipated to be posted on the court docket next week, will prove that the description of the texts in court was total rubbish, according to Musk's attorney, Alex Sparrow, of Quinn Emanuel Urquhart. Well, that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.